apologize about that. But with that said, let's go ahead. I'm going to start. I haven't I haven't listened to um, much of Tom's newer music because I've been wanting to do these reactions with it. So I'm just going to start with Scars and just expect for a, a whole bunch more of them to be coming in the coming weeks, okay? Uh, so I'm going to start with Scars, which I know I'm looking at it right here. It's from eight months ago. I haven't listened to the song yet because I wanted to do the reaction. And you guys said I not I, would, I should do the reactions fresh. So that's, that's what we're going to do. So hey, let's... Uh, Let's listen. I don't remember how I got all these scars, but I know I lived a hell of a life. I can't remember how I made it this far, but I know it was a hell of a fight. Could have been some bones in a coffin stone, drinking vodka locked up with the bros, causing problems broke at the bottom. You know that I got a lot of marks under these clothes, should have killed me somehow I survived. Hmm, man. Okay, diving in all, all, already, dude. Uh, first of all, I really like the, I really like this sound. So I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of a country dude myself. I love some country music, so I love this a little bit more uh, acoustic country sound to it. Um, but the, the reference here to these scars, you know, talking about, talking about his past, talking about, you know, uh, the skeletons in his closet, right? Um, the, the some bones in, in the coffin stone, right? Uh, man, I, just coming from a pastor's perspective, this is one of the things that that Christians live with all the time. Uh, is, is thinking that they got to cover up the scars, right? They got to cover up the hurt. They got to cover up the mistakes. Got to cover up the brokenness. When in reality, we serve a God that says in Romans five eight, yet while you were still a sinner, Christ died for you. Yeah, and God didn't wait for you to get all cleaned up. God didn't wait for you to get everything put together. God didn't wait for you to be perfect. No. God loved you and he died for you while you were still a sinner, while you were still in the midst of sin. He knew your every sin, your every mistake. He knew everything and he still died for you. That's how much God loves you, even with your scars. Mm, let's keep listening. Oh, hold on. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop for a second before he goes. Into, I love when Tom goes into it. Oh man. So yeah, he's, he's just going through like running through this past, right? Running through, you know, th that he should have died, that he cried all these tears. And, and, and what's amazing is like, he, he says like, I don't remember, uh, I don't remember what hurt me. I don't remember what caused this, but I remember the tears. I remember the pain. I remember the hurt. And so often that's what sticks out to us. That sticks, that's what sticks out is, is the pain and the hurt and the mistakes and the brokenness, the betrayal, the emotion that was there that, that wells up inside of us. And that's what's the hardest to overcome. It's, it's funny is, is within the Christian life, uh, within following Jesus, one of the commandments from Jesus is that we are called to forgive, right? Forgiveness is hard, man. Forgiveness is hard, but, but Jesus says, forgive uh, and your father will forgive you, right? We are commanded to, to forgive people for what they've done to us. And, and that's because forgiveness actually isn't for the other person, right? Forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is not for the person who is forgiven. It's for the forgiver. Because when you forgive someone, what you're doing is you're releasing that bitterness. You're releasing that hatred. You're, you're releasing those things that are tying you down. You're releasing those and saying, you no longer have that power over me because I forgive you for what you did. Now, remember, forgiveness does not equal reconciliation. Just because you forgive someone doesn't mean you should re-enter into a relationship with someone. I think you definitely need to pray about it and think about it because there are some people that it's better off if they're not in your life, but you can still forgive them and you can love them and you don't hold those things against them. And so you no longer have that bitterness and hatred built up in your own heart, right? And so you can forgive, but you don't necessarily have to reconcile with them. All right. This crazy life. Every single scar and every single scrape, every bruise and tattoo along the way mm. tells a little story that I can't explain because the words escape me, but the marks remain. They won't ever fade and they can't be erased. They made me who I am and I am not ashamed. Every bump and scratch and every drop of blood prove how far I've came. 
<laughs> Bro. Oh, see, okay, that's one thing I love too. All right, every, every, every scar, every mistake, every pain, every addiction, every, everything has made you into who you are today. Now, sometimes that's, we don't always love that, right? Sometimes we look at the person that we are today and we think, Ooh, I wish I was someone else. I wish I was somewhere else. I wish I didn't have this going on. But in reality, in reality, everything that you've experienced has brought you to this point. Everything that you've went through has brought you and built you into the person that you are. The strength that you have today is because of what you've went through and what you've faced. Now, it's really easy to look at your current self and see only the bad things, to see only the negatives, to see only the problems. But if you look at yourself through the eyes of God, you start to see the beauty that is within. You start to see that, yes, you are strong. Yes, you, you, you can say no to people that try to drag you in the wrong direction. You, you have strength and you have experience. And I truly believe that we are called to use that experience, that if you been through something, you then have the strength to help others get through that same thing. And so, yeah, the scars all tell a story, a different story, but a story that can be used and a story that has built you into the person, the wonderful person that you are today. So wherever you're at, just know that the scars, yeah, you may try to hide them, but they are, they've made you who you are today. And God can use that no matter what it is. He can use that. Yeah. All these ugly battle scars complete me. The reminders of the demons who tried their best to defeat me. They don't look so good in photos, but my struggles ain't beneath me. And these tattoos ain't for nothing. This is physical graffiti. Mm. Every broken bone, all the sticks and stones, and the moments when I felt so alone. Every single tear and like a million beers that I only drank so I could try to cope. Every bloody nose and all the muddy clothes when I was in the dirt down inside a hole. Every single scuff and every single scab made me who I am. Ooh. Oh man, that might have been my favorite part of the whole song. That was, oh, that hit hard. Whew. He says, I, I've had my scars longer than my friends, right? He's been facing these battles, been going through these things. And a lot of you out there are probably thinking the same thing that, listen, it's just not fair. The people around me, they, they've got these like baby scars and they were able to get over it and get through it. Like we were in the dirt together. We were going through this together and now they're just over it, living a normal life back into like nothing ever happened, right? Whenever you faced these trials that have just kept on and kept on and kept on and it no longer it doesn't matter how hard you fight it doesn't seem like you can get through it if you're in the midst of the situation because I, I realize that a lot of you probably are a lot of you've been in this situation and I feel you and I've been there um, I, w I want you to know that there is there is power in in Jesus truthfully honestly and I'm not just saying that I wasn't always a Christian. I wasn't, I didn't grow up a Christian. I, I spent the first 22 years of my life as an unbeliever. But when I encountered Jesus, it changed everything, everything. I, 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 I had scars, probably not like Tom, probably not like you, but I, I had scars. I had mistakes. I had problems. I had addictions that I had to be bro broken free of. And when I encountered Jesus, it truly changed everything. Yes, I was messed up. I was broken. Listen, if you'd have asked me, I'd have probably said I was a Christian, but I didn't believe in God and I didn't live like a Christian. I lived for my own pleasure. I lived for what I wanted and not what anyone else wanted. But whenever I encountered Jesus and I gave him my life, it changed everything. I became a completely different person. And I believe, I don't believe, I know that Jesus can do the same thing for each person watching this video right now. Yeah, Ooh, that hit hard.
Hmm. Oh, that was good. All right, here's my overall thoughts. Is is in this Tom goes deep into his scars, right? And I think that in the, through the whole song, it's kind of a metaphor talking about your own scars, the scars that you have, the brokenness that you have, the, the pain that you've experienced, the trauma that you've went through, right? It's, it's a reference to those scars, to that pain, to all those things that you've went through. And listen, all those things happen. And that's part of being in a broken, messed up world. Listen, this world wasn't always like this. Way back when, beginning of the Bible, Genesis 1, we see a perfect creation with Adam and Eve. But it's Adam and Eve that came and they brought sin into the world. And because sin was brought into the world, the world was corrupt and the world continued to get more and more broken. I promise I'm going somewhere with this. The world gets more and more broken because the world gets more and more broken. You and I experience more and more trauma, more and more hate, more and more pain. And we develop more and more scars that we try to cover up with more and more layers because we don't want anyone to see what is truly underneath. We don't want anyone to see what's actually happening here. So we cover up, like Tom says, with tattoos and with layers. And we just don't want anyone to see the real us because the real us is scarred, battled, and beaten up and messed up and ugly. You don't want to see that. You don't want to see the real me. You want to see the surface me. You see, but we have a God in heaven, a God that created you, that formed together every single one of your cells. He knew you before you were ever born. He knew every sin you would commit, every mistake you would make, everything you would do wrong. He knew it all. And that God created you and he loved you. That God formed you together. He thought about you and he knew you before you were ever born. That God made you. You are not an accident. You are not a mistake. That God knew your, your, every, your every day, your every being. And he loved you so much that he lit, sent his son to live a perfect life. Jesus Christ came down from heaven. He was God. He was and he still is God. He is God and he left his throne in heaven to come down and live a sinless life as a human being. He came down to be a baby, live a perfect sinless life. Why? Because you are scarred. You had made mistakes. Your life was imperfect. Therefore, you were not capable of paying for your own sins because of your own scars. So Jesus lived the perfect sinless life that you and I were not able to, pay, uh, able to live. The Bible says we have all fallen short of the glory of God, and it says the wages of sin is death. Because we have failed, because we are scarred, we cannot pay the sacrifice that must be paid for us to be saved. And so Jesus came down and lived the perfect, sinless, scarless life. And then he went to the cross and he took our scars. He took our scars. He took one through each hand and through his feet. And he lay there on the cross. He took a spear into his side so that you could be saved. And friends, I want you to know that it was not the power of the Roman soldiers that held Jesus on the cross. It was not the wood. It was not the steel through his hands and through his feet. It was not the spear in his side that kept him on the cross. No, it was his love for you and your scars. No matter what you've been through, what you're facing, how hard life has been, no matter what scars you carry right now, God loves you and he has a better plan than you can ever imagine. Lean and turn into him right now and that encounter will change everything. If you want to talk more about it, I have my Discord link down below. I would love to talk with you about it and help you to experience what I experienced because it will change everything. Love you. I'll see you guys in the next one.